we call this sengol in Tamil. Here the sengol means a glorious. Kol obviously means the measure, the rule. So we have a beautiful term. This comes to us right from Sangam literature, what we call sengol. And in the Indian languages, the Bharata languages, we call it as Dharma Danda. And this has been coming to us right from, right through the millennia. That's the beauty of it. And this signifies the Dharma, the rule, the righteousness of this land. If you look at the word Dharma, it's a beautiful word in the Bharata concept, which has no specific equivalent in the English language. Having said this, how do you showcase this idea of dharma in a visual form? So That's actually if you look at this, the word So if you really look at this, the word sengol and dharma, dharma danda, they both are very equal. In the sense sengol means glorious, kol meaning a measuring stick. And here again, dharma and danda we normally tend to say, oh, danda means punishment. But danda actually is a measuring stick or a like a yardstick. And typically is used to measure anything, a distance or a land and so on. So what is this dharma danda actually denoting? So a danda, since it's measuring, it's a measure of the extent of a land, a nation, a civilization. A governed entity, the governed area, how do you showcase it? I mean, other than writing its extent in paper, but if I were to show it to somebody and say, this is my land, how do I show it? I show it in the form of this danda, a dharma danda, which says, this is the extent of land which is bound within this dharma danda. So, when the British <clears throat> decided to transfer power to Bharat, that is India, they wanted a, a significant way of doing it. And at that time, uh, see Rajaji, he was asked as to how it is done and he went back to the traditional method of India and found how transfer of power took place in the days of yore and realized that it was this through this method of Singol that was done transfer of power. So that was used as an equipment, an instrument of transfer of power. Incidentally, if you look at this, when we look at the United States of America, one of the old democracies of the world, they also have this very similar concept of Dharma Danda or Singol for them. Do you know what they call it by? They call it by the name, the mace. Beautifully so. While America, the United States of America, is also a democracy for the last couple of centuries, they also have tried to denote, express this concept of a righteous good rule with the mace and it is and it is kept in the house of representatives in USA. Like this the, the idea of keeping the mace like this the idea of representing a good governance, a good system of administration, a righteous way of administering. We can see this both in India as well as in the United States of America, both being democracies, India being the oldest democracy and America being a fairly little recent but a fairly large democracy too. So we see this across the world, this beautiful concept of representing the righteousness, which, how do you represent it? By this single, this Dharma Danda. And that concept has been given to the world by Bharat centuries ago, millennia ago. Actually, this Dharma Danda uh, has two meanings. One, physically denotes the land. And secondly, it denotes the character of the governance. So, because it is a measuring stick, it kind of keeps people in under guidance, saying that this is the path you have to take towards Dharma. Because Dharma, the meaning itself, we normally confuse the word Dharma with uh, the Hindi word dharam meaning religion and uh, but it is far from that because there is another traditional word in all Indian languages which is matha for religion whereas dharma actually denotes that which something whether living or non-living innately bears 
See, it comes from the root word dhar, dharti, to bear. So, dharan. So, dharma means what something has innately. What does it bear innately? And that is its character, its behavior. So, dharma is, therefore, if you look at the innate character of everything in the universe, it translates into the order or the innate nature of the universe itself. The order, she uses the right word. How, what is the word we use for order? In India and the world, we use the word, the idea, ritha, ritu, that which is in sequence, in order. What do you use? How do we say it in English? We say use the word rhythm. It's a very ancient, traditional, Vedic word, rhythm. R-T-H-M. So we have been having this concept of order, ritu, rita, in English, rhythm, through the land, through the centuries, through the millennia. And the Dharma Danda is to say that the governance of the land has to be bound by Dharma. So it binds the physical extent of the land. It also binds the governance, the nature of governance of the land. So both ways this Dharma Danda denotes a measure and the binding on something which is a government. This governance that she spoke about, it's all about to be in synchronization, in sync, S-Y-N-C, synchronization with nature, in synchronization with times, in synchronization with the people, in synchronization with the geography, in synchronization with the hydrology, in synchronization with the topography, in synchronization with the weather. That is when you have a dharmic rule, a dharma, a dharma danda. So what our goal? Dharma Danda really denotes, beautifully denotes, is this idea of being in synchronization with the human nature, in synchronization with this earth and all the facets of this earth. So, what we normally see as a beautiful concept, which is difficult to explain in a simple manner. Here, our Sengol, Dharma Danda, what in the Americans call the maze, is so beautifully explained in a single word as well as in an imagery. That is the imagery that's been used in 1947 on August 14, 1947 late in the evening to transfer power from the British Dominion rule to the Indian Bharata civilization rule. So that continues now and that we are celebrating it every year is something that we should all be proud of and happy to be a civilization that's bound by dharma, that is in synchronization with nature itself. See, actually you can look at it as a relay race, where there is a baton, right? So in a relay race, one person keeps passing on that baton to the next person and then it goes on. So like that, successively, governments, when they transfer the uh, governance of the land, they entrust it using this Dharma Danda to the next succeeding government. So that is one. And coming back to the concept of Sengol and the Sangamira, we have a very beautiful poem in Tamil. Uh, I will just tell the words in Tamil and then explain it in English. So it starts with saying, Varapu uyara nir uyarum, nir uyara nel uyarum, nel uyara kudi uyarum, kudi uyara so what it says is, once the water bodies, the height of the water body increases, the grains grow. When the grains grow, then the, uh, the population around that water body and the fields, they grow. Prosperity. When the prosperity comes in. So once the population grows, then the civilization grows. And the extent of the land grows. That is, that's where it says kol uirum. So the extent of the civilization, the population, the land, the nation that grows. And only when that grows does a king grow. Here in so in case, the context, the, government, the here, government grows. In this case, in the modern case, the government is able to prosper, do well. So that is a traditional Sangam literature concept that has come down to us through the ages, which we are celebrating.